Next, we'll discuss genetics and intelligence. So, intelligence refers to the capacity that allows people to acquire new knowledge and use it to draw conclusions, solve problems, and adapt to new circumstances. One thing we might want to know is how much of this ability comes from genetics and how much is in, um, influenced by the environment. Measures of intelligence definitely have a large environmental component. However, an individual's level of intelligence is greatly influenced by genetic factors. How do we know this? Well, we've taken identical twins and studied their intelligence levels, and the intelligence level of identical twins is more similar, even if they grew up similarly, than twins who grew up together and are not identical. So for twins, we have to first understand what twin studies are. And when, with twin studies, we study monozygotic and dizygotic twins, so fraternal twins. So at the top here, you can see that when two different sperm fertilize two different eggs, there's two different zygotes, which have completely different genetic material. The overlap and the, the uh, genetic material of these twins is not nearly the same as when one sperm fertilizes one egg and then that egg splits up into two, their genetic material will be exactly the same. There are a few exceptions to that, like near twins, which means that the genetic material replicated itself, but um, in a mirrored fashion, which means one may be right-handed, one may be left-handed, etc. However, for the most part, they're genetic information is exactly the same. So here we have on the y-axis the similarity of intelligence scores and on the x-axis we have what type of related individuals we have. And all the way to the left you can see monozygotic twins reared together have the highest correlation or the most similar intelligence scores. The next would be twins that have the same genetic information, the same genes, but they were reared in different environments. So environment certainly has an impact. However, genes seem to have a much bigger in impact as dizygotic or twins who do not have exactly the same, but they do have similar gene makeup, some overlap, reared together, have a 60% correlation in their intelligence scores. And then siblings, so those who are just reared together but they don't are not necessarily twins, they're just siblings, so they um, have 50% of their mother's genes and 50% of their father's genes um, in some order, um, have you know about a 45% correlation. And then individuals who aren't related at all and are raised in different households, so they don't have genes or environment in common, have virtually no correlation in their intelligence. So here we can see that definitely there is a cor that correlation tells us that there's definitely a relationship between genetic material or uh, um, genes and um, intelligence. And environment does play a role, however, it doesn't seem to be as big of a role as the genes. One way that researchers will um, look for what extent the genetic factors are responsible for the differences between individuals as opposed to the environment is they'll use something called a heritability ratio. So since intelligence is also influenced by environmental factors, we would want to know within a group how much of the environmental factors are actually um, accountable for the variance in this group. So a heritability ratio is a variance measure. So how much of the variance is caused by genes and how much is caused by the environment? So it's a summary of the effect of genetic differences within a given population and environment. So for example, and this number is, uh, it has a ratio, has a value between zero and one. So a zero indicates no phenotypic variability is attribu attributable to the genome. So let's take that to intelligence. No variability is attributable to um, the intelligence of 
and uh, I'm sorry, no variability in the intelligence of a, of a group is attributable to the genome or the genes, or a one indicates that all of the intelligence is attributable um, to the genome or the genes. So how much do an individual's phenotypes vary in the group that we're examining in their current environment? If we took that same um, group and put them in a different environment, we would have a very different heritability ratio because we're wondering how much of the genetic variance is accountable for what the group looks like or what, how the group performs on an intelligence test. This, won't, this heritability ratio will not tell us anything about a specific individual's ability or level of intelligence, however. So um, one way that we could do this is, um, is to study, there was one study that examined intelligence scores in two groups of people, a group of middle class individuals and a group of individuals with a low socioeconomic status. And they estimated the heritability of intelligence for the middle class group um, to be accounted for by about 70%. And for the low SES group, it estimated heritability was close to zero. Well, what, how could this be or what does this mean? This could be one interpretation of this information is that the human genome provides a potential for developing intellectual skills, and then the environment makes up for the rest of that. Um, so, for example, if you have a potential for intelligence and you're put into an environment that's enriching and you have all of your basic needs met and nourishment and you have health care and you have appropriate uh, stimulation, then you may perform to your optimal, you know, to your genetic um, ability level. However, if you have the same genetic capacity, but you're put in an environment that does not have those things, does not have, um, you know, great education or great health care or basic needs met, then you may not perform as well on measures of intelligence.